Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Marcus here, it's so nice to see all of you again. Now that we're in 2021, we can look back at the year 2020 and we can see that there was a lot of changes to our lives and a lot of unexpected things happened. For me, one of the biggest changes was working from home full time. And when you work from home full time, that really changes up not only your office setup, but the devices that you use as well. And one of the devices that I wasn't expecting to revisit was this, the original Google Pixel Book. We're gonna talk about that in this video. Now, the first time I got a hold of the Pixel Book was in early 2018. And I'll be really honest, I wasn't impressed with the Pixel Book at all. Um, the hardware, well, beautiful. I mean, the hardware was great. It had a nice metallic design, it was thin, it had a nice soft touch around the palm and the bottom of the laptop. Uh, it had a high resolution screen and it had four Farfield microphones that was meant to provide really amazing audio quality. The processor was an i5. I got the eight gigabyte version as well as 120 gigabytes SSD. So this was really great hardware. Unfortunately, the disappointing part about the Pixelbook and what really turned me off was the buggy software. It was just not ready to be used. Now by that, what I mean is that Android application and Android integration into Chrome OS was just kind of starting at that point in time. Developers hadn't yet updated the applications to be compatible with Chrome OS, so Android apps would either crash or they just wouldn't scale properly to, to the bigger screens. Uh, in addition to that, the tablet mode was introduced in Chrome OS. Wasn't a smooth experience. There was a lot of bugs with it as well. If you put the Pixel Book in tablet mode and then put it back, sometimes the screen orientations wouldn't change. Uh, sometimes the touch operations weren't working. It was really frustrating. Linux is also a part of the, the OS and you can install it. However, I couldn't find a good use case for it at that point in time. And that was also really challenging to install as well. I really wanted to like the, this device when I got it. And I kept it for eight months, really trying to find a use case for it. It was really frustrating for me to use. And unfortunately, after a while, I just kind of gave up and, and sold it which I really didn't want to do. I really wanted to like this laptop. I mean, look at it, it's thin, it's, it's got such great feel to it, typing on it is, is amazing, it's got a glass trackpad. Uh, what more could you want out of this? I and mean, it's light. Fast forward to 2020, I'm working from home full time now and I need to be able to take meetings using Microsoft Teams, Slack, or Zoom. A lot of my work is now done in the cloud, so you could use Office 365, you could use Google Docs or even Citrix. And that got me kind of looking and interested again in Chrome OS. Why am I interested in Chrome OS? Because I wanted to be able to use a combination of web apps as well as Android apps. For something like Slack and Zoom, where I'm just chatting and taking video calls, I could use a web app. But in some cases, I want something more fully featured. Um, and in order to do that, you're going to need a dedicated app, like an Android app. So for Microsoft Teams, for example, I can use the web app to take video calls, but there's a lot more that I can do with the Android app, things that I can get out of productivity by using the Android app. So Chrome OS is great. I can use a combination of both of those. Now, when I'm not working, Maybe I want to also be able to use Signal, which is only on Linux, or I, maybe I want to play some games. I have my option of Android games, and I have my option of games that are compatible with Linux. So now um, I can install Steam on Linux um, and play some of my Steam games or stream it from my PC over to my uh, Pixelbook. In order to do all this, I need a Chromebook that can kind of keep up with these demands, that has a processing power, that has enough RAM, and that has a nice fast SSD. And that's where the Pixelbook comes into play. Now, I gotta say, after my experience with the Pixelbook, I was a little bit cautious about going back to Chrome OS. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised when I opened up the Pixelbook for the first time that Chrome OS has actually matured a lot in the two years that I haven't touched it. Android apps are now properly supported by developers, so the integration in order to use it in Chromebook, it's not buggy anymore, um, the apps work fine. Linux has been updated. I'm able to 
um, install things like Steam, uh, play games or stream it from my PC or download it directly to my Pixelbook. Tablet mode it has also been, you know, it's not buggy anymore. So uh, gestures are now there, it, the orientation's all fixed. Overall, Chrome OS has become a more mature operating system. So the software has finally caught up with the hardware. It took a little while, but it's finally there now. And this makes the Pixelbook a very compelling device. Now, in addition to the software matching up to the hardware now, if you look at the price, you've got a very compelling package. A used Pixelbook on eBay is about $400. So $400 for an i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a 128 gigabyte SSD is very competitive. In fact, even more so competitive and a very attractive price point than the high-end Chromebooks of today. I compared the Pixelbook Go to the Pixelbook from 2018. That's a two-year difference. The processing power, so the i5 and the Pixelbook Go, is only 8% faster than the i5 in the 2018 Pixelbook. Now to me, the 8% difference in processing power of the Pixelbook Go compared to the equivalent Pixelbook from 2018 is not worth the price difference. If you can get a Pixelbook from 2018 that's in really great condition, it's still very competitive today. And I think that this is a really great buy in 2021 for everything that you get for the specs, for the hardware, for the price you're paying, it's a really compelling machine now in 2021. Okay, I've touted the really great things about the Pixelbook. Is there anything that I don't like about the Pixelbook? The first one is that the speakers on the Pixelbook are not great at all. Um, for, some, for a device that's this thin, I can't really expect the speakers to be amazing. Uh, but the speakers, if you look at any of the original review, they're fine, their loudness is fine as well, but they lack bass, they have pretty much zero bass. The other complaint that I have about the Pixelbook is that there's only two USB-C ports. That is all the ports that you get on this device. So there's no way to expand the storage using a micro SD card. Um, there's no USB-A, so you're stuck with USB-C and just you're stuck with the dongle life if you want to use any USB-A uh, devices. Now the other thing that I didn't really like about the Pixelbook, um, and I still don't like till today, is the 3x2 aspect ratio. A lot of people will tell you that a 3x2 aspect ratio is great for productivity. Now that's true if you're only doing one thing at a time. Um, and if you're like me, I like to multitask or I like to be able to have two windows up at, at a time. So if you're using a three by two aspect ratio and you have two web pages side by side, all of a sudden you're going from a square to some very vertically squished web pages. Um, and I don't like that at all. Other concerns that you might have about the Pixelbook is that um, it's age. Uh, we're in 2021 now. This came out in late 2017. Um, so when you look at the security support page for from Google, uh, the Pixelbook is going to be supported up until June of 2024. So that's not too far away. So for someone who wants a lot of um, longevity out of their Pixelbook, uh, that might be a concern for you if you're going to stop getting security updates in 2024. Now, that doesn't mean you can't use your, your Pixelbook anymore after 2024. It just means that Google will officially stop sending security updates to this operating system. Other concerns that I have um, are that the screen still wobbles a lot whenever you're using it in laptop mode, in any of the convertible modes. If you touch the screen at all, it just wobbles. It wobbles a lot. I wish the hinge was a little bit tighter. It's not something you can change now but that is a minor annoyance that you'd have to deal with. Lastly, one of the other concerns that I've had about the Pixelbook back when I bought the Pixelbook originally in 2018, and now today, the concern about the Pixelbook is finding replacement parts for it. If something breaks on the Pixelbook, like the keyboard breaks, or your battery dies, it's really hard to find new parts for this. So you've heard my thoughts now on the Pixelbook from 2018 and its usability in 2021. Do you agree with this, disagree with this? Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Additionally, if you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video, I can answer them in the comments as well. 
If this helped you in any way make a decision on whether you want to go ahead with getting the Pixel Book or not, uh, please feel free to smash that like button um, and smash that subscribe button. It really helps me out as a content creator uh, knowing if I'm making the right videos or if I'm making the right content for you, the viewers. Thanks again, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, take care.